Thank you for joining this session and for attending the Citrus Converge 2021 conference. My name is Rich Faulkner. I'm an enterprise solutions architect for Conversion Group located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've been working in the end user computing arena for over 25 years now. I first got started with Citrix with WinFrame 1.7. I can still remember hearing about the acquisition of Netscaler, I believe at a Citrix conference. Mark Templeton seemed to be excited about it. Since this is a virtual conference, please use the quick Q&A part of the interface to post questions, and I will answer those during the live broadcast of this session. I'd like to start off with why I even started working with the ADCs. As I stated previously, I started with WinFrame 1.7. I was reluctant to even do that. I thought we'd gotten away from terminals when we went to client server and off of mainframes. As I started working with WinFrame, then MetaFrame, etc., Citrix won me over to the usefulness of the end user computing environment. Then in 2005, Citrix bought a company called Netscaler for a lot of money. At the time, I remember thinking it sounded cool, but it was a networking appliance, so I didn't really care. At that time, if you wanted to access your MetaFrame servers outside of the network on the internet, you had to add an alternate address and open the firewall port 1494 to the internet. I'm sure you can see the flaw in having a known port available on the internet with just a username and password keeping you out of the servers. Quickly, it became apparent there would be a need for a device in the DMZ that would log people in before they could get into the internal servers. We could add multi-factor, et cetera, and be much more protected. Citrix developed a Windows web server function that would do this, but people were hesitant to have an IIS server in the DMZ. So they developed a hardened appliance called the Access Gateway. At the time, I could not get our salespeople to sell it without them using it. So I got one and deployed it in our network. The networking team didn't want to touch it because it was a server. The server team didn't want to touch it because it was running Linux. So I had to learn a device and deploy them. Once our salespeople started using it every day and seeing how easy it was to use, they started selling them to all of our customers. Since Netscalers already existed in the DMZ and already provided other features, Naturally, the gateway functionality soon became available on the Netscaler. It was because of this that I started even looking into them. Naturally, the networking engineers wanted nothing to do with it, so I was forced to learn about the appliance and what could be done. It was a very powerful tool. I like to call it the Swiss Army knife that everybody uses to just cut things. Most people who own one only use it for one main and maybe a couple of other purposes, but it is capable of so much more. As the Netscalers evolved, I learned to appreciate all they were capable of. In doing so, I found that there were a lot of configuration items that were similar. Additionally, I learned that the device could be configured by either the GUI or the CLI. I initially started using the CLI to help speed up some of my deployments. As I became better at it, I learned how to make the changes ahead of time in Notepad++, and I could manipulate the device very quickly from the CLI, much faster than I could from the GUI. Now that I've been working with the CLI and the ns.conf file so much, I can read the file and tell you what the ADC is doing. I did a practicum for Citrix one time as a test. They gave you the design for what they wanted the ADC to do, and you had 24 hours of runtime in a cloud environment to get it up and running. I prepped everything ahead of time in Notepad++ and only had the system powered up long enough to copy my commands and to run tests. They thought I had failed because I only had it turned on for an hour. I didn't miss a thing and had even done a couple of other items they didn't expect. Now I'm going to show you a quick demo on how much easier it is to configure the ADC from the CLI versus the GUI. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we're doing any of these commands is that we're going to come in here onto the putty. I like to... Uh, once I'm connected, I'm gonna go ahead and set my change my settings here. So I'll put up, I'm gonna log it. We'll put the printable output. Usually pick a good spot to put that. So we'll go in here to some share file and Citrix Converge in the demo, and we'll call that putty. You can do the commands. We'll give you the And that will set the month, day, year, 
the host and the time that you connected for the name. We'll save it in there. .txt, save. Apply that on there. Okay, so I can do a show EJ node to get an idea of what's going on with my machines. We'll clear that out of the way. So let's say that I want to go in and, and adjust my SSL ciphers to be more secure. I've got a tech paper here from Citrix that says, I want to put these cipher groups in here. So if I was going to do that by the GUI, I would have to come down here on the GUI. I come down to traffic management, uh, SSL ciphers, groups. I'm going to click add the cipher group. And we'll call it Converge 2021. And I'm going to click add. I want to search my cipher, so now I'm going to go through and select each and every one of these. We'll do a little copy and paste action. And there are 10 of these. So obviously this is going to take a little bit of time. A lot of fun. You wouldn't want to go searching for these any other way. It's a good thing we have that search button in there. Because I tell you, trying to find this stuff is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. You see all the different places it appears. I forgot where I was. GCN. So, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's ten of them. So we'll go back over here, nine. Last but not least, number 10. All right, I'm going to go ahead and create that. So now my cipher group is created. Now, if I did that by the, C the CLI, I'll come down here to the commands on the CLI, and I can come in here and grab this, go over here to my putty command, paste those in, and I'm done. See how much quicker that was? So I come in here and do a refresh. You can see I have my Converge and my ALS A plus cipher group. I go into there, there's all 10 of my ciphers in that group. Now, add insult to injury, let's do something that's gonna be a little tougher to do. Now I want, I've got somebody comes in and says, okay, we're front ending our exchange server with this. So we need to block any connections to port 25 with the exception of those SSL or email relays that we want to be able to get through here. Okay. So now I'm gonna have to go and set some ACLs on my commands. I have to come in here to system, network, ACL. And I say, all right, so now I come in on my ACLs. I'll grab that guy's number again here. Do an extended ACL. I'll just give it the name of this guy. It's going to allow. We'll give it a priority of 10. I'm going to give the range of source IP. Destination range. Protocol is going to be TCP.
Source port will be a range of any. Destination port will be 25. Let's say create. There's my ACL. Now, imagine I need to do that from every one of these addresses. So now the easiest way to do that is going to be So now I'm going to copy in all of my IP addresses. We'll put them into Excel. We know it's going to be in a couple of spaces, so I know I need to do an add, NetScaler, ACL. Since I know these are not going to be any numbers I really need to do anything with, I'm going to go ahead and format all these cells in a special text format so they won't try and treat them as numbers or negatives and so forth. And then I'm also going to come here and break this column up a bit. So I know the next part of my command is allow source IP. And these ones once again. Now my next command is the destination IP and the command one with the destination port of 25 and the protocol of TCP and priority Set this at 11. Okay, so now I know I need all of these commands to match down here. So we'll pull this all the way down here to the bottom. You know, these are going to stay the same, so we'll pull them all down to the bottom. And I know I don't want these numbers to change, so I'm going to copy them. follow the pattern. Raise the priority, but leave all the others the same. So you can see I kept my same IP address, my same port, but gave the priorities up. Okay, so now I have all my commands for what I want to allow. I have to put in a deny. So we're going to add NetScaler ACL. I'm going to call it global. Deny 10.22.05.41. We'll say deny source IP of 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 to any the destination IP in the same. And all this will match. So we'll copy that. And we'll set this one really high so that all of these will take precedence over it. Once that's completed, I'll go ahead and save my file. I got that saved as a comma separated values. So you can see that. I'll save it as comma separated values. We'll close that out. Then we'll come into my file here. You can see it there. I must say edit with notepad plus plus. Okay, so Obviously, these commands are not going to work in this format, so I'm going to come in here and we'll do a replace. Pull my file over here, and the first thing I want to replace is all those commas with a space. So replace all. We'll get them in there where they need to go. 
Then I need to replace source IP because it has to have an equal sign after it. We'll put that in there, replace all those. Same with destination IP. Replace all those. And then they have destination port, it's the same way. We'll replace all those. So now, all my commands are in here. You can see the colorization is done on this because I have the language for Netscaler. If I take it off, I'll put it back to normal looks. But you can import that Netscaler language and it will allow you to identify how your commands are going. So now I'm going to do a copy on all of that. Bring it over here to my PuTTY file. Paste all those in. And if I go back to my Come back over to my ACLs, look at my extended ACLs, and you can see all of my commands are now in there. 144 ACLs worth. Now, a couple other things I'd like to point out uh, while we're coming through here. First of which, I can come up here to Diagnostics, and I can say, save versus running. And you'll see when it comes up, then it shows what my what changes have been made, so I can see what those are. If I want to back them out, I can export the corrective commands. So I'm gonna export those corrective commands. We'll put them in this demo location here as well. back to the start and at that in notepad plus plus there's all my commands I hit a control a back here copy and removed all those ACLs once again come down here to the ACLs you see just the one remaining from before. The other thing that we've done is we've got our putty session set up here and I did my savings. I can come in here and see my putty commands. I recorded everything. So if I need to repeat, I can. Go ahead and pull all those commands back up. I hope watching that demonstration shows you just how much time you could save by learning to do it via the CLI. Most web pages, including the Citrix documentation, that deal with how to configure the ADC will show you both the GUI method and they'll give you sample copy capable code snippets that you can use to modify and configure your devices. And we haven't even gone into items like REST ABI or Stylebooks. I hope you found this session to be informative. We'll now open the floor to the questions as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can see my information listed here. You can reach me at richard.faulkner at conversantgroup.com and let's link up on LinkedIn with forward slash Richard Faulkner JR. You can also follow me on Twitter at RJ Faulkner JR. And I want to thank you for coming and I hope you have a good day.